I invite you to take a seat and to grab your Bibles or your Bible apps and turn to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 20 is where we're going to be tonight. Uh, if you don't have a Bible with you, uh, that's okay. Just grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you and uh, you will find uh, Exodus chapter 20 on page 72. And we invite you to turn there. And if you don't have a Bible, we invite you to take one of those with you when you leave. We want you to have the Word of God and read the Word of God because we know if you do that, then God will change your life. Hey, Happy New Year! Happy New Year. So glad that you are here on the very first weekend of 2019. It's unbelievable that uh, it's, it's already 2019 and we're here and we're worshiping and we're celebrating and there's a lot of new stuff going on. Uh, we have two new campuses, one in Parker that's worshiping at 11 on Sunday, one at McCulloch that's worshiping at 9.30 and 11 on Sunday. And I want to say hi to those campuses. We're glad that you have joined us for worship and, uh, and this is exciting times. A lot of new stuff is happening at Calvary, including a new associate pastor. And so I want to introduce you to Joe Donahue, who is our new associate pastor for preaching and leadership. That was, that was kind of a nice princess wave there, well, wasn't Well, I thought it? about doing a spin. Yeah. You got the good stool. And I can't shoot. do that. So, hey, we're glad. We want to welcome you to Havasu. Welcome to Calvary. Now that you've been here almost a week, you've had clothes and furniture for like 24 hours. 24. Uh, how, are you, uh, how are you? How do you like it so far? Oh, my gosh. We love it. It is beautiful. Lake Havasu is awesome. My wife and I, as we were driving around, she even made the comment. She said, uh, it's like living in a dream. Uh, she said, it's just beautiful here. The folks have been awesome. Uh, family, a church family has been helping out, helping us unload and get unpacked and watching the kids, feeding us meals. It's been great. It's been very good. So, but not only are we excited about the town, not only are we excited about the church, but we're excited really about this series that we're kicking off tonight, Guardrails, uh, focusing on one of the most controversial topics, religious topics that we see in the news, the Ten Commandments. Uh, it's, it's very interesting how the Ten Commandments can be posted in a workplace and then taken down. Uh, how Ten Commandments can be posted in a school and then taken down. Even posted in a courtroom and they're forced to take them down. In fact, uh, just a couple of years ago in Arkansas, the state capitol in Little Rock, some, they, post, they uh, built a monument for the Ten Commandments and within 24 hours, the Ten Commandments, a man ran right through the Ten Commandments with his vehicle and destroyed them completely. So, uh, but not only are the Ten Commandments controversial, the Ten Commandments are also, uh, we find there's a lot of ignorance surrendered around the, uh, centered around the Ten Commandments as well. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, uh, okay, let's just ask this question. How many of you, uh, right now, if I came down there with a the microphone, could name all ten of the Ten Commandments? Okay, I see those hands. You guys are brave. Way to go. I'm not going to do that. Maybe you just called my bluff. But, but most of you didn't raise your hands. Uh, they did a survey of Americans. Okay, so this is American audiences. And they found out that 35% of Americans know the names of the Brady Bunch children. <laughs> How many of you know the names of the six Brady Bunch wow. children? Okay. Uh, we're not representative of the United States of America in here right now. <laughs> okay, 25% of Americans know the ingredients of a Big Mac. Who knows them? Come on. A lot of you grew up, yeah, older people raise their hands because we grew up with that commercial, right? To all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun, right? Got that? <laughs> See, we know it. Some of you are like, oh, I didn't know it. I know it now. Yeah, I remember that. So guess what the percentage of Americans are that know the Ten Commandments? 35% know the Brady Bunch, 25% know the Big Mac ingredients, 14% know uh, the Ten Commandments. And we really would like uh, that percentage to change around here. In fact, at the end of the series, we'd love a lot more of you to be able to raise your hands and say, we know the Ten Commandments. Uh, so the Ten Commandments can be found in Exodus chapter 20. So as uh, Pastor Chad has mentioned, that's on page 72 in your Bible. And we want to read them to you. And tonight, instead of reading all 17 verses, what I'll do is I'll read the first three that we'll be focusing on tonight. And then we'll jump and hit the other Ten Commandments as they're listed. So let's, uh, let's read together. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image. Jump to verse 7. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. 
Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Verse 12, honor your father and mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And you shall not covet your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, his male servant, his female servant, his ox, his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. That's a list of where that can be found. And I want to read once again the first three verses that we'll be focusing on tonight. I am, what the Lord said, the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything. So we're going to kick off uh, talking about the purpose of the Ten Commandments. Purpose of the Ten Commandments. Now, originally, God gave the law to Israel to explain who he was and, and how to live to please him, how to live to honor him. Now, realize that the Israelites were a nation, uh, a family group of people that, that had a heritage of, of forefathers that knew God, Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob. Their story is found in the book of Genesis. And, and, uh, but they didn't have a religion. They didn't have a faith. They didn't have a system. They just knew that their ancestors had a relationship with well, who they called the living God, the one true God. And so as they were led out of slavery and God was beginning to establish them as a nation, as a people, and establishing a faith base, he revealed himself to them and gave them the law so they'd know how to live to honor him. So they'd know how to live uh, understanding who he is. Uh, now for us, and when I say us, I mean Jesus followers. So if you're here and you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, and you believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins and was raised from the dead, and you've made a personal commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then, then Jesus took the Ten Commandments. In fact, he took all the law and the prophets, and he summarized them with two verses. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. He said the entire law and prophets hang on those two. So that's the, the, the great commandment. But the original ten are still instructive for us. First of all, they set the boundaries for blessings from God. They set the boundaries for blessings from God. How many of you would really like 2019 to be a year where you experience God's blessings? Okay, if you didn't raise your hand, see us afterwards. We're going to pray for you, okay? <laughs> I mean, we all kind of want something good to happen. We want God to bless us and... and uh, and here's the thing, God tells us explicitly how to be blessed. He, he, he just lays it out in his word. That's why we study scripture, because we believe the Bible is the word of God that tells us how to live and what to believe. And, and, and so there's some misconceptions about God's will and, and landing in that place of blessings. There are some people who believe that God's will is some deep, dark mystery that you can't know. And there's some people that believe that God's will is kind of like crossing a river uh, on stones. You've got to jump from this one to that one, and if you slip or you miss it, then, then you're trashed. I kind of think that God's will is a whole lot more like driving down a highway. Uh, and, and it's kind of clearly marked, and, and the lanes are there, and, and, and God's will is sort of the boundaries. Those Ten Commandments are sort of the boundaries that tell us where the edges of the road are. And if you stay inside the boundaries, then you're going to be blessed. Now, Joe, you just moved your family over 1,200 miles, most of it along Interstate 40. Uh, and it was winter, in case you didn't notice that. So oh, uh, we noticed. How was your trip? So our trip, so we loaded up my four daughters, our miniature schnauzer, and of course my wife and our minivan. And we drove almost through 500 miles, well, through 500 miles of snow and ice. So how do you think my trip was? Exciting. It was exciting. <laughs> I learned as I, uh, you know, you learn a few things about yourself as you drive. One of the things I've learned is that I can't see anymore at night. You know, as I'm driving, I'm like, I can't see. The headlights are coming. I just hope and pray that I don't drive into somebody while I'm going down the road at, at night with my headlights on. I've learned I can't see. You don't so look we that old. I, I know I don't. I don't look so, that, what'd you say? You don't look that old, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but the roads, they were covered with snow and ice. And as we drove, we knew we needed to get here, but we didn't push it. So that meant we had to stay in hotels more than we wanted to stay at night. It also meant that we drove a little bit slower. And what I mean by a little bit slower is a lot a bit slower. Uh, we drove very slow. Um, 
I learned I was a lot like my grandfather as I drove. If you have ever been in a line of cars uh, and you, you're stuck behind a whole line of cars and you're saying, who is the moron up front that's slowing everybody down? That would have been me on Interstate 40. So I'm driving, semis are jackknifed along the interstate. They're sitting off the side. Four-wheel drive trucks are in the ditches. And I'm creeping along at 20 miles an hour with a line of cars behind me in my mini minivan. And we're singing Ice Ice Baby. <laughs> So I knew the line of cars was getting frustrated because some of those four-wheel drives, uh, trucks, they started passing, not one or two behind me, like 15 cars behind me. They're passing and they're going around and I'm looking at them as they pass, just thinking, I am trying to save your life. So that's how our trip was. Uh, well, we're glad you got here and you got here because you stayed on the road. Barely, but yes. But you did. See, and, and so the Ten Commandments are boundaries for blessings. And the Ten Commandments will keep your life from crashing. That's the purpose. They'll so keep your life from crashing. God tells us where the guardrails are for our life. This is a theme you're going to hear a lot in this series. Uh, th those are the guardrails. And, you know, guardrails are needed where the road is most dangerous. And where it's, it's uh, the most dangerous, you have the most guardrails, and they keep you from crashing and from, and from dying. And, and see, here's the reality. We are all driven with self-destructive urges. Because of our sin nature, every one of us are natural-born rebels, and we have the urge, while we're trying to follow God's will, to drive off the road. Okay? That's just a natural bent that we've got. And, and if we're honest about it, we know those areas that we want to drive off the road. And sometimes, because all of us drive off the road, we all rebel, we all sin, we know it. But sometimes we do it in places where it's kind of smooth. And so you get some bumps and bruises and maybe a flat tire. So you just look like kind of that guy with that, the donut tire on there for a little while, doesn't look so good. But, but you, you get back on the road and you can go. And sometimes, uh, let's just be honest, we drive off cliffs. And we smash our lives and we do harm to ourselves and those that we love. You see, that's, that's the reality. God gave us spiritual guardrails to keep our lives from crashing. Now, still, some people, they want to kind of accuse God and say, well, God's just all about no. You guys are just all about saying no, and it's all about the rules. It's all about the laws. And somehow they think that God is depriving them of experiencing an exciting life full of options. So I want you to think about it a little bit differently. All right, so, so for instance, parents, would you allow, or parents and grandparents, would you allow your uh, grandchildren or your preschooler to play with a loaded pistol? No, of course not. Yeah. Or, or how many of you, parents or grandparents or, or just anybody, how many of you have ever told a child no when it, and they're around a hot stove or a campfire or something else that's hot? How many of you have done that? Yep. Okay. Uh, another, as we've moved to Lake Havasu, we've learned that you can't play with all the dogs that are walking up and down the road that some of the dogs are coyotes. So my children, they love dogs. They love being around dogs, they th every dog they see. So on uh, just a night ago, two nights ago, we had to sit down with the girls and say, girls, you can't run out and pet all the dogs that you see. Now, how many of you would allow your, your child or your grandchild to go up and pet a coyote? Any of you? Yeah. Of course, if, oh, we got a hand back there, depends, so we want you to see us on, at the end of the service. Wait, it depends on whether or not we're letting them play with the weapons. Right, well, all right. <laughs> if, now, if you're going to allow your preschooler to play with a loaded weapon, then, of course, they can pet a wild coyote. Yeah, sure. And, and anyway, so, okay, or how about this? Because, uh, and sorry, this is going to gross some of you out, but, uh, you know, you ever been at the park with your little toddler or your, you know, grandchild that's a toddler, and, you know, uh, it, there's signs that tell you to keep the dogs out of the park, but not everybody, you know, obeys those signs, uh, you know, or they have those wild dogs that wander through. And, 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 of course, there's a steaming pile of poo there just off the path, right? And what does your toddler inevitably want to do, right? They want to go and explore it. And so they head for that, that steaming mess. And, and what do you say? <laughs> yeah, I don't think any of you are going to say, oh, go ahead and play with it. Why don't you taste it? See if you like it. Yeah, I didn't think so. No, you're going to stop them. You're going to run and grab them and say, no, don't do that. And if they touch it, you're going to grab their hands and wipe it off with the, the wet wipes. And you're going to be trying not to gag the whole time. 
So what's wrong with you? You guys want to deprive your children uh, of the joy, of the fun? Uh, you guys are just all about restrictions. I mean, you're no on all this stuff. You see, you understand your purpose as parents and grandparents is to protect and to bless. Protect and to bless. Well, guess what? If you're a follower of Jesus, then God is your heavenly father. And he wants to protect you and bless you. That's why he gave us the Ten Commandments. And so we understand that the Ten Commandments are there to bless and to protect us. It's not a system of no, God trying to take life and, and the excitement of life out of our lives. It's to bless and protect us. So let's now discuss that first command, no other gods. And it's important to understand the, the Ten Commandments in the context of this passage of Scripture and of the history of the Israelites. See, the Israelites have been held in captivity for over 400 years. Generations of children were raised up watching the Egyptian people worship over 2,000 ancient gods. And can you imagine that? Watching, your, uh, watching people that you worked with and, and talked with and were enslaved to worshiping false gods. The first command was information and expectation. See, God was communicating to them, I am not like those false gods. He informed them that I rescued you. I am the one that brought you out of Egypt, and I expect you to have absolute loyalty to me. I'm not like those other gods. Don't call out to the God of rain. Don't call out to the God of vengeance. I am not like those false gods. And speaking of God, God of vengeance, vengeance yeah, that's right? What, he's giving you an amen. He was, was that an amen? I think so. All right. God was saying, look, I am all you need. I'm all you need. I'm the only one that you've got to call out to. And, and as I reflect on that, I think, do I truly trust God with all of me, my life? Do I, do I truly trust God or do I turn to the, the three M's? Do I turn to myself? Do I turn to money? Do I turn to medicine when I'm in need? Now, God can certainly meet my needs through those things. But am I turning to God first? Am I calling out to God first? Does he have absolute loyalty from my life? You see, God expects our absolute loyalty. So if you identify yourself as a follower of Jesus Christ, then, then he's saying to us, uh, I want you to be loyal to me and, and not worship any other gods. And, and there's a why to that. So let's talk about the reasons that God expects our absolute loyalty. Uh, the first reason he's already told us, and that's because God delivered us. And God delivered the Israelites. Chapter 20, verse 2. This is, this is the beginning of the Ten Commandments. He says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. God, God begins explaining who he is and how they are to live by reminding them that he is the one who delivered them. That if it weren't for God, they would still be enslaved to the Egyptians. They would not have freedom. They would not be a nation. They would not have the, the freedom to worship God at all. And so he said, look, I want you to do this because I'm the God who delivered you. I'm the God who set you free. So for us, we just need to reflect and remember that, that God is the God who delivered us from slavery as well. We were slaves to sin. We were, we were slaves to our self-destructive urges. And God sent Jesus into this world to rescue us from ourselves, from our sin, and from that punishment that went with that, which is death, which is hell. It's judgment. And we have no hope apart from Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. And so God delivered us and gave us life and gave us forgiveness and gave us hope and gave us peace. And the New Testament over and over again tells us this. The Apostle Paul tells us this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says, For God made him who knew no sin, Jesus, who is perfect, God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. God took the glory of Jesus and, and he wrapped us up in it. God took the, the life of Jesus and he wrapped us up in it. And God took your sin and my sin and he wrapped Jesus in that. That's a beautiful picture, but God set us free because of Jesus. The apostle Peter put it a little bit differently. In 1 Peter 1, he says, For you know 
that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you by your forefathers, but it was with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. You see, the price of our freedom, the price of our salvation, the price of our eternal life, it, it's Jesus. And so God is worthy. He deserves our absolute loyalty because he delivered us. We also demonstrate absolute loyalty to God because God is worthy. Now, I want us to hash out that idea of worthy. When something is worthy, we are willing to exchange something that's not as worthy for that which is worthy, if that makes sense. Uh, just a little bit of my, uh, my, my past life, the past uh, couple months, I was the lead pastor at a church in, in Arkansas. I believe that God was leading us here. Uh, I believe that God was leading us to come here and, and sp speaking with Chad and the executive team. We were excited about that, but I had everything that I could ever want there in First Baptist Lavaca, Arkansas. I was the lead pastor. I got to call the shots, and, but I believe that God is at work here. And to me, I'm, I'm watching and I'm seeing what God has been doing. I've been watching the church over a course of uh, four or five years and seeing evidence that God's hand is working through you. God is using you. God is working through you and other people's lives are being changed as a result of your faith. And I'm saying that's a body of Christ that I want to belong to. Well, Joe, you're not going to have the big fancy office anymore. Well, that's okay. Joe, you're not going to have the title of lead pastor anymore. That's okay. It is worthy to be a part of what God is doing here. Let me ask you something. Do you believe that God created you? Do you believe that God, God created your wife? Do you believe that God created your children, your family? Do you believe that God created your friends? Is that something that you believe? Absolutely. Then God is worthy of absolute loyalty. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross suffering for your sins? Do you really believe it? Do you really believe that Jesus has forgiven you of your sins and he's shown you grace and mercy and not only a second chance, but a third chance and a fourth chance and a fifth chance and over and over and over again as we mess up, God continues to show us grace and mercy. Do you really believe that? Amen. Then God is worthy of our absolute loyalty. No one else is worthy of our worship but God because he's creator and redeemer. And, and God deserves our absolute loyalty because God is life. God is life. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, Jesus also said in the Gospel of John, the thief, talking about Satan, comes to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Have it to the full. Have it overflowing. You see, Jesus identified himself as life. And if you want life, then Jesus is your only option. He pretty much said that. Look, if you want to come to God, if you want to experience salvation, if you want to have this fullness of life, if you want to live a blessed life, then Jesus is the only option. He's the only way. He's the only truth. He's the only life. And, and so we understand that, but we also know that the world is going to offer thousands of options. And they're going to call them life, and they're going to sell them as life, and they're going to try to say, hey, this is life over here, and this is life over here, and, and, and they all look really appealing, right? I mean, it might be the, the, you know, secular intellectualism. It might be atheism. It might be the new age philosophies. It, it can be, you know, prosperity and success and money and things. It might be, you know, education and status. It might be fame. It might simply be pleasure. All of those false gods invite you to come and worship them. And God says, no, I want you to worship only me. Have no other gods. I want your absolute loyalty, your absolute devotion, your absolute faithfulness. And if you give it to me, then I am going to bless you with life. You pursue those false gods, I promise you, you're going to end up empty. You'll be wanting. And, and, and most of you can testify to that. But Jesus is the one who's going to give you life. He's the one who's going to give you hope. He's the one who's going to give you peace. Uh, so I'm just telling you today that if you'll give Jesus your absolute loyalty, he will give you life. Absolutely. And, you know, as we talk about guardrails, you know, there, there's something about head knowledge and there's something about the application of truth. 
We're talking about applying truth to our lives. We're talking about applying all of God's word to our lives, beginning with today, the Ten Commandments. Is it something that you would apply to your life to have absolute loyalty to God? When you think through and you process the decisions that you made today, did they demonstrate an absolute loyalty to God? Well, if you're like me, you're going to say, no, I blew it like 50 billion times today. And God's going to say, come on, I love you. I care about you. Let's get this grace thing down and let's move on and walk in grace. Let's walk in love. Let's walk in peace. Do you have that relationship with God? Have you met him? Do you have that kind of relationship? Have you ever met Jesus and trusted him to be your savior? Have you experienced that life change? You will if you begin to apply God's word to your life. And as they mentioned earlier, if you have a question or a a thought about how to experience that life change, uh, you can meet with one of our pastors at the Connect Center at the close of our service. How will you choose to live? Will you choose to live life today by following God's word? I hope and pray you will. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for uh, you love us so much that you've given us your word to apply to our lives. Lord, help us not to just be hearers, but to be doers. Help us to, be, to live out that life change, to live out that changed life that Jesus brings with great joy, with great hope, with great mercy and great kindness to our fellow man. Lord, I pray that you would help us to apply the Ten Commandments to our lives and to follow you with absolute loyalty. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen.